A report was recently released which showed that there are trace amounts of weed killer in many of our breakfast cereals. Glyphosate, the chemical in that weed killer, has many concerns this morning, so we wanted to talk about it. What is fact and what is hype? Yeah, and here to help us sift through all of that is Brent Wisner, who was part of the legal team who just won a $300 million verdict against Monsanto, the manufacturer of Roundup, a weed killer. And Leah, how are you pronounce Segedy. Segedy uh, of um, Momovation. Momovation. Momovation com. Thank who you. is the Aaron Brockovich of the Green Movement. Welcome to you both. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, so, Brent, uh, how did you do it? You went up against one of the biggest companies in the world and you won. Yeah. I mean, the way we did it was with science. I mean, the simple fact is, over the last 20 years, more and more science has shown that Roundup or glyphosate, which is the primary ingredient in Roundup, causes cancer and this stuff is everywhere it's not only in our foods but it's used on school grounds it's used uh, at people's homes it's used in, in community centers and it's actually pervading our environment there's been more glyphosate and roundup sprayed than any other chemical ever in the history of the world but your, your client that got this particular verdict against him he was doused with it twice right that's right which which he argues and you argue led to his cancer most people aren't going to be doused with it. That's true, but it's all about uh, not just about the intensity of exposure, but it's also about chronic duration of exposure. So if you're getting small amounts of it over a long period of time, whether it be in food, whether it be in the context of your occupation, then it builds up. Mm -hmm. And over time, repeated assaults to the human genome is ultimately what leads to mutations and ultimately to cancer. And so while Mr. Johnson got it relatively quickly in only about two years or two seasons of spraying, other people who are being exposed to these over a period of 20, 30 years are at the same risk. And that's what's really important to understand. That you don't have to be covered in it for it to be harmful. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, a lot of people at home are scared. They're hearing this like their breakfast cereals cause cancer. There's something that's linked to it. And you're considered, people know Aaron Brockovich. So now you're the Aaron Brockovich of glyphosate. So I just have to ask you, in California, there's a Prop 65 that warns everyone on everything we eat. When you walk into Disney on a warning, things in here can cause cancer. You know, what are we looking for in the things we eat at home? Moms at home are feeding their kids. What, are, what do they look for? Well, there's three crops that you can basically look for that we know have higher levels of glyphosate, and that's oats, wheat, and beans. And so, for instance, what was looked at the other day was a lot of cereals that have oats in them. So it's, it makes sense that they had higher levels because it's based on how they're sprayed, when glyphosate is sprayed on them. And when it comes to oats, wheat, and beans, they're sprayed, glyphosate sprayed on them at the end of harvest, so it dries it out quicker, it saves the farmer time, then it kills, basically dries out the plant, then they can harvest it, which is why you're seeing high levels of it in certain products. Now, is this all hype? I would say the controversy is about what safe is. And there's a lot of controversy behind that. And the science, the scientists do not agree. Now, one thing of interest is a couple of weeks ago, it was actually three weeks ago, the American Academy of Pediatrics came out and said the way the FDA and the EPA evaluate food additives is actually putting children and pregnant women in danger. And they are trying to pressure the Congress to change the way our government evaluates what safe is. So what would you say? So you've got some examples here. I've got some examples so walk here. us through that. So this was a study that was done by the Environmental Working Group. Um, and they tested levels of glyphosate in food that had oats in it. Now, some of the losers, based on their level of 160 parts per billion being a safe level, these are the products that really didn't win. Okay, but can I just ask you a question? If they didn't win, is, are we talking about serving size? Like, I'm eating a bowl a day. My right. kids have, all kids and moms at home feed their kids Cheerios. I'm just going to say, like, moms, babies, they, you know. So if one a day, or is it talking about, like, five or six bowls a day. What, what's a safe level per day? When they evaluated it for 60 grams of food, the level that the environmental working group was comfortable with, and it's also based on what California says, is 160 parts per billion for that bowl of cereal, okay? Mm -hmm. So a lot of these products, Cheerios, Lucky's Charms, Quaker Oats, these are the products that went way past that. They went to like 495 parts per billion, 600 parts per billion. It was really, really high. And then there were products that did a really good job of that. And a lot of those products products right here I have that did, were non-detectable with something like Quaker Oats, or I'm sorry, Nature's Path, because 
they, glyphosate is prohibited in the organic um, certification, Processes. so they can't spray it. We've got some statements well, we want to read, though, right? Yeah, General Mills came out and released a statement saying our products are safe and without question they meet regulatory safety levels. The EPA has researched this issue and has set rules that we follow. So they're right. saying they've set the rules. And Kellogg also responded saying our food is safe. EPA set standards for safe levels of these agricultural residues and the ingredients we purchase from suppliers for our foods fall under these limits. So here's the thing. The FDA puts limits and markers on stuff. They say that's safe. They say we can ingest this stuff. And unfortunately, a lot of things, we drink coffee, it says it causes cancer. Anything, um, baby food nowadays, right. arsenic, rice. Right. So how does, I'm going to bring this back to Brian, how does someone at home who says they, got, they have cancer and they've eaten these foods, do they have a case? Well, that's a tougher question. It depends on exposure. But I have to say something that's really important. The FDA and the EPA have betrayed us, okay? And that's shown in the documents. I mean, in the case we litigated where we got this verdict, we showed the jury text messages, email communications between senior EPA officials and Monsanto executives, the kind of conversations you do not expect to see. Like what? Um, you know, uh, hey, let's see you at the retreat next week. Uh, let's, you know, hey, sweetheart, I hope I can help you out. I mean, and these things, are some of the lesions we're looking at. That, uh, that's Mr. right. And, and, and this suffered. is the consequence of that. I mean, sometimes our government agencies fail. And when it comes to Roundup, when it comes to glyphosate, they have. And that's something that people have to come to grips with. And so you say, Kellogg and General Mills, I'm not suing them, but, you know, they, they're saying that it's safe and that it's below the regulatory limit. And that's all good and dandy, but the simple fact is that regulatory limit is too, uh, too high. So we shouldn't eat them. Would you eat them? Would you eat this stuff? I don't feed this to my family. However, I ate it when I was younger. This was before we knew. No, I'm saying yeah. all of us ate this kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Really well, quickly, I, I want to ask, you know, they treat, and most kids go to the pediatrician and get lead testing. That's because of lead paint in homes, and there's lead warnings. You say there's a test for glyphosate. What does it show you, and does it show your levels in your body, or does it test the food? So there's two different tests. Okay. This is a test that you can get. It's from the Detox Project. They also certify food products for glyphosate residue-free. You can buy this test, and it shows you what levels or how much glyphosate is in the food. Now, I did this last night with Quaker Oats, and it came up high. Mm. And so even I was able to do it in my kitchen and verify what the EWG says. There's another test that's brand spanking new. It's like two, three weeks old where they can take your hair and tell you 120 days worth of pesticide exposure and tell you glyphosate, but then all kinds of other pesticides. Wow. That information is on my website, momovation.com slash pesticide test for more information. Yeah, and for more information on that home test, as you just mentioned, you can also go to our website, foxla.com. Uh, this is an important issue. It affects pretty much every one of us. And so we appreciate uh, both of you being here to talk about it. Thank you so much. Thank you.